now, E! True Explorer Story presents Pizarro. And tonight, for the special 600th anniversary of the Round Table, we have a special Round Table edition of E! True Explorer Story. With your host, Alec Leinbarger. Yeah! Thank you, thank you. Tonight we have two self-proclaimed experts on explorers, and we will discuss the life of Francisco Pizarro. Please welcome Anderson Wang and Andrew Grafton. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Let's start off with a review of who Francisco Pizarro was. While the exact date of his birth is debated, there is no doubt who Pizarro was. He was the Spanish conquistador of the Incan Empire and the founder of Lima, the modern-day capital of Peru. He was born in Trujillo, Spain, and was the illegitimate son of Gonzalo Pizarro Rodriguez. Oh, and did you know that Francisco Pizarro was the second cousin of Hernan Cortez? That's an interesting fact. However, that is not what we're here to talk about. Pizarro had made many trips to South America before, but in, in 1533 he made his major one. He conquered the Incans, just like Cortez before him, who conquered the Aztecs in Mexico. So he voyaged to South America to conquer his Incans. Pizarro had made many trips to South America before, but in, in 1533 he made his major one. Oh, and by the way, his army had about 200 people, and the Incans had 80,000. Not a single person in his army died. Yeah, yeah, I would like to mention that he only had three arquebuses, 20 crossbows, and 37 horses. Well, then, it, wouldn't it have been his, uh... Why did he have such a huge advantage over the Incans? I mean, how did 200 people kill 80,000? Well, horses gave a big advantage. But I think that was, and their heavy armor that they wore. Yeah, they also had metal armor, and it would be that was hard to be penetrated by the Incan spears and other primitive weapons. So you're saying his army basically just went and killed 80,000 people? Not really. He just came, he wanted money. He wanted to take the gold and bring it back to Spain. Yeah, he wanted to get to the king at Ahuapa and hold him for ransom so that he could get the gold. That's pretty mean. Tell me more about this ransom. After killing off all of Atahualpa's bodyguards, he said that he would kill him unless he paid the ransom, which is to fill up two whole rooms with pure gold. Well, he never really asked for that. The emperor just did it to, try bribe, to let Pizarro let him go. Oh, whoops. I forgot about that. So what happened to the king after the ransom? Pizarro killed him. What? Yeah, he just brutally murdered him. He just did it. Wow, he must have been a really bad person. He got what he wanted and he still killed Atahualpa. Well, if you think that's bad, you should know that he destroyed many Incan temples and statues, destroying their whole culture just to get their gold and return it to Spain. Yep, he needed that gold. Destroying someone's culture just for personal gain? I never knew that Pizarro was, th was this bad of a person. Well, Pizarro did think he was doing the right thing. He, well, he was getting gold for his home country, which is, very important. And at that time, a sense of nationalism was very important in improving the colonies around the world for different nations that controlled them. Also, the people at that time didn't have as many morals as there are now. Yeah, like, it, it killing, definitely wasn't as strict, like, rules. Like, yeah. they didn't think his things were that bad. Yeah, like, I don't think Francisco so, Pizarro thought that he was committing a crime. Yeah. Man. Is it because they weren't Christians? Oh, th yeah, there was something like that, because... Or they weren't civilized people. So, in 1524, before coming to South America, Pizarro formed a partnership with a priest named Hernando de Luque and a soldier named Diego de Almagro to help him explore this, uh, South America. All right, so he like had an argument with Pizarro brothers. Yeah. So what happened was, El Negro was, was not, oh, he didn't feel that he was getting his fair share of the loot. So he got into an argument with Pizarro and tried to kill Pizarro. But Pizarro, before El Negro could kill him, Pizarro killed him back. Wow, that's pretty mean. I mean, I would, I would, this guy doesn't sound friendly. I would not want to be around him. Yeah, I all think he was a little power hungry. All right, all right. So, so he's been, so at this point he's been, they attempted to kill him already. And they, um, and he's conquered the Incas and founded Lima, Peru. 
what happens at the end? I mean, how does he actually end up dying? Well, some of Allegra's friends and followers aren't too happy about him getting killed. Obviously. So, they go into um, Pizarro's palace back in Spain and assassinate him, basically. Yeah, they broke into his house. And, like, Pizarro tried to defend himself, but there were just too many. And when he was fighting against the people that were trying to kill him, someone stabbed him in the throat, and then he fell on the floor died. So why... But why does my history textbook and, like, other things that I've read, why do they praise him? Because he was the victor, and history goes to the victors. And it's, they record it. Because, like, they want people to, like... If they told, all right, so if they said what his faults were, then people, wouldn't, people, look up to people him. wouldn't look up to him as much. And they wanted, yes, pretty much. Well, thank you, gentlemen, but we're almost out of time and we have to get going because The Lord of the Rings is on next. And we all, <laughs> we know, we all know we want to watch that. Anyway, thank you for your time, gentlemen.